Hello, dorks. Happy week two of Texas high school football season. Um, Ash Pickle with Dave Campbell's Texas football here at the Valley Sports Southwest studio. We just wrapped up our first full football Friday show. If you were watching this before one o'clock in the morning, um, you get to Valley Sports Southwest right now. Aaron Hardigan, Greg Tepper, Craig Way, all on bringing you highlights all across the state on um, high school scoreboard live. But what another week of Texas high school football going to go through some of the biggest games of the night. We'll start off with one that we had talked about all week long, said it was probably the best game in the state that was in the 6A classification. It was Katie taking on Atascacita down there at like Legacy Stadium. Atascacita has never beat Katie, and that streak continues tonight. 35 to 28 was the final there, and it was an incredibly competitive game. It was just as good as we hoped it was, uh, just as good as we hoped that it would be. It ended a minute left in the fourth quarter, none other than Seth Davis running it back for a 57 yard touchdown to take the win, but came away incredibly impressed with both teams. I think, if anything, this is just going to continue to motivate Coach Stump and his Eagles squad heading in to district play as they start rounding that out at Tascacita absolutely not a team to worry about Katie um they look just as good and I think that they were, might be a little bit other than Seth Davis might be a little bit less talented this year when it comes to a straight up athlete perspective but Gary Joseph has a disciplined squad and honestly when you're talking about Katie that might be the most dangerous moving on to a, another big game here we'll go we'll stay in the 6A area Geyer taking on 5A Division 1 Alito Geyer putting a hurting on Alito. Alito has now lost three straight if you go back to their last loss last year, which was to Sock, the eventual 5A Division II state champions. Um, this is the first time that Alito has started off 0-2 since 1991. It was well before I was born. Um, a, a shocking kind of development there. And I will say, obviously, last week they take on Parish Episcopal, Episcopal, the number one ranked private school team. This week, obviously, punching up to take on Geyer. There is a classification deficit there, but we have not seen Alito make any sort of decisions on offense. I mean, it's it's sluggish. It's looking a little unorganized. Um, now, I think moving into district play, Alito will start playing people, obviously, more in their weight class, and they won't have to worry, but definitely still leaving some questions there. If nothing else, this Geyer squad is operating on all cylinders with Jackson Arnold at quarterback showing that he's not he's a lot more than just a unbelievable passer he's starting to really show off his wheels on his ground game to the Bowen brothers in the backfield I mean from offense to defense to special teams Reedheim squad looks like the favorite right now very early on but they have shown no sign of weakness uh, pushing over Alito there next up um, another shocking kind of big school game here and shocking if you will Cibolo Steele getting it done for the 2-1-0 taking down Hank Carter and his late Travis Cavaliers 35 to 28 again same score as the Katie um Atascacita game big questions for Lake Travis they're still not playing with Bo Edmondson I get that they're not even playing with Caden Leon who we thought was the backup quarterback last week he's out this week um so they're playing with a third fourth string quarterback that has to play a little bit there but the main thing is the fact that this defense just it looks it doesn't look promising they've got a lot to figure out now when you have an offense that starts to operate you're able to keep your defense off the field a little bit more maybe that makes a difference but another astonishing 0-2 team to keep an eye on but Cibolo Steel I mean what coach Sign's squad is doing down there they had the unbelievable win against Brennan with 18 seconds left at the KSAT Classic at the Alamo Dome last week they turn around they take down Lake Travis they had their first undefeated regular season since 2015 last year and they're looking to repeat that especially against even tougher competition than what they went up against last year so incredibly impressed with Steel, I think statewide people need to start paying attention that the San Antonio area has really really good football teams this year Steel looks to be leading that pack um another answer we talked about it all week long Allen C.E. King Allen C.E. King obviously destroyed Crosby last week last night Crosby ended up winning and beating a Fort Ben um, Hightower team and we're like, man, that means C.E. King has to be really, really good. Alan Stompsum, 49-14. This was a 
big win for Coach Lee Wigington, obviously his first win as the head coach of the Allen Eagles. Really impressive there. So still more questions to be answered. What is C.E. King? Did they have an unbelievable week? Did Crosby just have a really bad week? One thing's for sure, Allen is back to being Allen. One that may have meant went a little bit under the radar, not necessarily to the Dave Campbell squad, but how about Stephenville and Everman? Everman having an unbelievable game right until the literal final seconds where Stephenville was able to pull it out 62 to 61, breaking the hearts of both the Bulldogs and Matt Step. I'm not sure if this Everman being their they have shown that they are a very good squad this year, but Stephenville, that's a little bit concerning. Obviously, we're able to pull out the win. They made an unbelievable comeback because Everman was up 21 nothing at one point. Um, so they really got their feet set, but Sterling Doty and his Stephenville squad are going to have to get out to a better start if they're going to keep going on, especially in the district that they're in. You look at China Spring, you look at Waco La Vega, that's a gauntlet right there in Region 2 in 4A Division 1, so we'll be very interested to see that. Then in the smaller school realm, I think we're starting to get our answer about the Jim Ned Indians. Holiday beat them 41 to 19. Jim Ned now another notable team that has started off the season 0 and 2. It's concerning. Xavier Wisher was their guy for so long. He's not there anymore. What is this team? What is the identity of Coach Fanning's squad? Jim Ned looks like right now they might be trending downward, um, but a great win for the Holiday Eagles. Very impressive by. Then one other really big note to point out, Coach Randy Allen did win his 426th game tonight. Why is that notable? That means he tied, he is now tied for second winningest coach in Texas high school football history, the first of which being legendary coach Phil Danaher out of Cal Allen. Randy Allen now is tied with G.A. Moore. You remember him, Salina, Pilot Point, everywhere kind of up there in that greater, don't want to necessarily call it Texoma area, but truly remarkable for coach Allen and, and what he's done there with the Highland Park Scott so congratulations to him a big big milestone I was actually there for his 400th win so to see him get here um was was quite um very very awesome for him last but not least Stingham Jackets Lano Yellow Jackets taking down Burnett 29 to 21 that battle right there on Highway 29. Obviously, I am a Lano grad. I'm going to show a little bit of home team favoritism there. Burnett, always a huge rivalry of us growing up. They've got a great squad out there, um, but really proud of what the Lano Yellow Jackets did tonight. They're they're taking it home. They're waving the flag, and Coach Matt Green's squad is uh, making their case for that three Division One Region 4, so we'll be very interested to see that. So, tons of of very interesting games tonight. Some questions finally answered and more questions still to come. It's only week two of the season, but we will have all of those answers for you. Remember, we are off of TFT on Monday, but we will be back Tuesday to break everything down. Thanks and have a good weekend, guys.